Huh? You're my favorite. What? You're my favorite. Oh, what a coincidence. You're my favorite, too. <laughs> it's live, you know. Turning up here. I'm just letting you know. Oh, good to know. Oh, I love you. I pushed it, and then you said, I love you, so. Well, it's a positive note to begin on. <laughs> Have fun. It's true. Uh, let's see. I wonder what this looks like if, when I'm doing this live. I am live. What? Oh! Did not like that at all. Cool, cool. Oh my goodness, it totally messed everything up. What did I just do? All right, go back out of there. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Okay, let's try this one more time, shall we? Eh? Eh? Boop. 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 Nope, it does not like that. Okay, I'm not going to try that right now. Move on and not worry about that. Do, 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 do. Getting things ready. Okay, uh, how do I go? No, close this. Don't. <laughs> What is that? No, 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 no. I definitely do not need to be listening to myself while I do this. Okay, there we go. Now, can share it. Facebook. And shared. Bloop. Okay. And come on, just test this. Still skeptical about the stuff working. Okay, cool, it's working. <clears throat> Let me figure out a better way to do my chair. Ugh. So today, I've changed things up a little bit, and uh, we have the overhead camera, hello, looking down at what I'm doing. Uh, and then also, the little thingy in the corner so you can see my face, so that way you don't have to just stare at my face while I talk and yammer and have to hold things up. And you also can ignore my face completely if you want, like you can just move it off the screen or whatever, and now you don't have to see me if you don't want. Cool? Cool. So many paint brushes. I need some crap paint brushes for some of this. That's a crappy one. That's a crappy one. And I need a detail brush. That one will work. That'll be good for now. For what we're doing. While we're waiting for people to show up, I I got my, my new cup. It's not really new. I just put a sticker on it. Because, you know, it's like in the movies where they cover up the, the branding. I figured I'd cover it up with our own branding until we get our own coffee cup someday. Anyway, I don't know. <sighs> Homemade iced coffee. 
I'm gonna put that over there. Hey, Alan. How's it going? So, like I said, today is going to be a little bit different. I am working on, so my good friend Julie uh, posted pictures the other day of uh, her and her daughter, who is Hazel's friend, and they're about the same age. Uh, they made a fairy, gar a fairy house in their garden in the backyard. And so I was like, that's a great idea. I was like, was that 3D printed? And uh, she was like, no, but that would be a good idea. So then, of course, I decided to go and work on a, a fairy garden. So I have a whole bunch of 3D models of D&D &D miniature stuff. Shocking, I know. Um, and so I found there's one of the sets that I have has this cool door and entryway. So it's actually pretty cool. These just go in here. And then this goes on here and like, you know, it's intended to print out like a whole dungeon or whatever. I think this is actually the front door to like a tower, this particular set. And then it has like a whole thing with the keep and crenellations and all that stuff. But for just a door, bang. So it doesn't open all the way, but that's, you know, it doesn't need to because there's not Spoiler alert, there's not going to be real fairies living in the fairy house. Um, <clears throat> but, so, there's that. And I did some base painting on this. I did a couple of, uh, I did a, let's see if you can kind of see it. Yeah, so if I hold it this way, I did kind of a brick color and I sprayed it from the bottom up on all the pieces, except for the doors. The doors are totally covered. And then I did, from the top down, I did kind of a mossy green color to make it look like there's kind of moss. So it almost looks like a color shift, but it's not. Um, so that's that's part one of the fairy house, and I'm gonna work on weathering this up. And then what I'm gonna do, in addition to that, is I busted out, so I have, because of course I do, I have, I'm gonna put this right here. I, this is only one bin of all the stuff I have, but I have all this stuff for making dioramas, because I used to make dioramas a lot with Gundam model kits. So of course I still have a ton, a ton of supplies, like this stuff, grass, dark green grass, burnt grass, snow, all the things, light green, um, fake trees. I have uh, talus, which is rock debris, it says right there. Uh, in multiple sizes because you know you can't have just one size if you want it to look realistic like a an avalanche or something. I even have this easy water stuff which I, I never actually use and I really want to actually try it for some prop making but it's these pellets and you melt them you heat them and they melt and then you pour it like water and then as it cools it hardens and so you can get like realistic water effects because they dry uh, when they they melt and they're like translucent. Yeah! exactly let's do it i have i have you can whatever i have the stuff for whatever landscape you want like i said um you know coarse turf uh i have I, I mean just every every color imaginable um i even have like tall grass that you like cut to length i have it all so but this is all the stuff that i'm not using because i already picked out the stuff that i am going to use Ugh. Or at least that I'm maybe going to use. I got, I have a, a good selection over here off screen, kind of. But everything down to like fine soil turf, medium green grass, you know, a little bit of earth. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of goodies. Oh, the autofocus is struggling. Well, that was, is it struggling constantly or because I put the box up there? Is it still doing it? Is it every time I put my hand, huh? Boop. Boop. Yep. All right, well, I'll try to move slowly. I wonder if I'd move this white piece of paper if that would make it better or worse. Oh, for crying out loud, this camera is driving me crazy with this focusing nonsense. I mean, even if I'm like, this is my hand like on the table. Like, look at that. It's not even, oh, it's, how is a streaming camera this susceptible to moving? I think I need to switch out the camera. What a pain in the butt. Okay, anyway, so that's the first part of it. 
The second part is uh, we. I'm always talking about reusing and trying to not waste stuff, which is my biggest pet peeve with this whole prop making, costume making. So one of the things that I'm sure anybody who does any 3D printing, it doesn't have a manual focus. It's just this, it's just this, this little streaming uh, webcam that is floating up here. I don't know if maybe if I move it up more, you're going to get more of the, the table. But uh, maybe it'll, oh, I don't know. I wish I could just tell it to, I, I don't know if that's, oh, well, I should figure that out then, huh? I was going to say, I was wondering if maybe there was something in the actual Twitch stream where I could say to not, to turn off the focus, but I don't think I can in the, in the actual stream software let's see stream preset resolution bit rate color objects recording audio hotkeys no there's nothing in there but like you said maybe in the i can probably find uh, it's a logic app and it's terrible sweet okay well i'll go and look at that next time before next time before tomorrow um, but so everybody who 3d prints knows what these are and you have a bajillion of them laying around after a while and you're always like what do I do with these things so I had this idea uh, like a month ago and haven't had a chance to implement it yet but it turns out that this idea that I had perfectly syncs with this other project so my idea was uh, so we're, we're talking about making a garden, which is what the fairy house is for. And a problem with any plants, right? Anybody who has planted anything knows a big problem is always like weeds and weed barrier and keeping weeds away from your plants, right? Well, so I had the idea. There's a hole here and there's plastic all around it. So got some plants, Boop. right? This is, this is for the uh, roof of the fairy house. But so one of these little plant doodles is roughly, depending on the filament spool, uh, it's about the same size as the hole in the middle, right? So my theory is, and we're gonna test it with this once I'm done, is dig out a little bit in your garden, stick the filament spool in the ground, bring your ground cover or whatever up around here, stick your plant in here, what that does is your plant, of course, can grow the roots down into the soil underneath. The weeds can't get to your plant because they can't get through the plastic. They would have to go up and around and hopefully you would catch them before then. Um, and so then your ground, just the top here would have ground covers. There's not actually any soil here, just ground cover, like your mulch or whatever. Um, so it's really hard for the weeds and things to get up to your plant. Uh, and especially like with this, it's a ground cover plant. So it'll grow up and over here. And if you did a couple of them together with a bunch of these spool holders, then you're really limiting the ability for the weeds to get to your plants. I don't know. It was an idea, and we're going to see uh, if it works. Um, this is just a random one, but I'll throw that aside. So what I did is I, I cut this one. because So the plan here is going to be to take this guy. I'm going to glue it right here glue it down onto the flat part of this and then I'm going to actually do uh, some standard typical diorama building techniques to build up the sides on here I'm gonna get to that in a minute uh, and then paint all this and so basically it's the same idea that I just described using this as a planter except that it's gonna have the front exposed uh, right at the edge of the garden so this will be right at the edge of the garden, you know, in the, and then the, our garden wall is here. And then uh, the plant will come up and grow over and, you know, we'll keep it out of the way of the door. But um, so this is going to be the proof of concept of growing plants in the filament holder while also making a fairy house for Hazel. That's the gist of it. Um, so, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the 
Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to glue it on and go from there because I think at this point, uh, like I have the base colors on, so I think if I just glue it on, it'll actually make it, eh, will it make it easier to paint it and do everything else? Maybe. We'll see. What the heck? We're going to go for it. I should probably have actually, eh, that's okay. It'll work. It'll be good. Thanks. I, I mean, in theory, you know, I in theory I have lots of good ideas, but in practice they don't always work out. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm gonna use this gel super glue. By the way, this isn't product placement. This is actually a little trick. So these Loctite super glue um, things. It doesn't matter what kind of glue it is. Any of the Loctite ones that come in this little squeeze bottle thing. Um, I really like the gel control ones. Uh, I actually do like the glue that comes in here. This is what we use for putting the screws and everything in our helmets. But but once this is done, if you actually pop this out of here, put the cap on here just in case I squeeze it too hard. I don't want it to splooge goo everywhere. Sp glue everywhere. So if you pop this out, it's basically like one of those toothpaste squeezers. <laughs> but for glue and look inside here it is just a little it's one of those little bottles of super glue so if you like the way these work once you're done with this if you also have like you can buy one of those packs of like the little tiny tubes that come in like bulk and you stick it in here and then you can use this applicator for your other super glue they're pretty cool um so yeah, let's, oh, actually first I'm gonna glue this together. Probably the best place to start. It doesn't fall apart. And yeah, so the door and the rocks were um, printed on, I'm gonna make sure this doesn't fall apart. I'm gonna get it all around here. These are printed on our Elegu Mars, they're resin prints. Uh, I figured that would be, I originally was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick print on the, FDM printer, but then I was like, well, it's going to be outside in the sun and like It's not like full sun all the time, but it's going to get hot enough out there that um, I don't want to do all this work and put it out there and then come back the next day and it's like a melted pile of Oh <sighs> Off to a great start Where'd the door go? It happens. This door, the, the hinge on the door is pretty, um, it's pretty flimsy, but again, it doesn't really matter too much because it's just going to be sitting outside. But what you probably can't see is that it broke off in there. Um, it did that yesterday as well, and I glued it back, but clearly the glue was not glue enough. Oh, now I broke the other one off. The bottom peg is gone now. Well, you know, when I broke it the first time and was trying to fix it, Heather said, why don't you just make it so that one doesn't open? <laughs> Which, you know, it's not the, oh, hey, Cass. Uh, yeah, we're good. I mean, you know, as good as can be, I guess. Surviving, hanging in there. I'm going to, this is some kicker. Uh, to hope, hopefully, with any luck, get this glue to cure to the peg so I can pull it back out without oh, come on. actually gluing it in here. I'm probably going to glue it in here, though. I don't actually need these to rub close, so you can move them out of my face because they're in the way. Idea number two, get the peg out first. Ah, there we go. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. It's so hot here right now. Ugh. I don't know. I don't even want to go look. My the, the thermometer in the garage is over on the other side, so I don't even know what temperature it is in here right now, but I'm guessing it's probably 
it's probably i mean i would say 80 but it's probably like 77 okay kicker bam i love kicker kicker by the way if you use super glue at all is a required tool in your arsenal it's it's called insta set but i mean i don't know anybody who doesn't call it kicker i don't know Oh god, yeah, please, a oh, con, please. I'm looking at the temperature, even though I said I wasn't going to. Oh, 76 and a half. Look at that. I was that's pretty close. I'm gonna call that a win. Cause I was only off by a half degree. And I'm gonna say that the half is over there. Is Is that a trick question? Um <laughs> no, but <laughs> hmm. Um Yes, I agree. Anything above 70 is is too hot. I uh I lived in before I lived in Santa Monica in Southern California, I lived in Murrieta, which is the Inland Empire, close to but not quite the the desert um of California. And I think the hottest that was ever there was um one day it was 120 outside and i mean i'm sure alan i, I this is the same with arizona because i've been in mesa in the summer so i know it's it's at least somewhat similar but like the biggest difference between here when it's hot and arizona when it's hot like it's so dry like you would walk outside and like your breath just leaves your butt like it's like whoo, and you're like <gasps> like just trying to get breath because it's so dry like it just sucks the air out of your lungs when you walk outside at least that was my experience um who yeah that's no good um but i don't like above 70 so which is why i stopped living there and moved closer to the more temperate area of california before finally moving up here um which is where I wanted to move. Anyway, come on. I'm trying to get this back in here without breaking it again. Very gently. Oh, 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 okay, good. We're in there. Okay. Now the question is is there some way I can fix this so that it doesn't fall off? Yeah, I know. Don't break it. Um, no pressure. Yes. But, uh, oh. That cracking sound was the filament spool I threw on the ground. Nothing important. Don't worry. Um, where did the other piece go that broke off? I'm never going to find it. Mm. That's okay. I will find something else to fix it with. Like a piece of toothpick. Um, <laughs> but... To uh, answer your question, what's my favorite thing that I've been working on lately? Um, so the those um, Okami swords that I'm so close to being done with are probably one of my favorite things that I've done, um, just not even lately, but just at all, just because um, it's, it's not something that I'm... I really enjoy making things where I'm not just straight up reproducing something directly, uh, where I get some creative control, not necessarily where I'm designing something from scratch though. It's kind of like this middle ground between, I like having some direction, uh, but then also some freedom. And so for that in particular, um, she had, uh, she commissioned Zach Fisher to design her, her costume. Um, and I'm sure most, if not everybody, knows who Zach is. Um, and so he designed, he did her, uh, the Okami design, uh, Okami samurai design for her. Um, and part of that was uh, the swords. Um, but the swords in the picture are kind of like, uh, if, you're, if you look at the art, like the hilts kind of stick out. Uh... <laughs> the hilts are sticking out and then the swords are behind her so you don't really see like the whole thing um and because they're in the back there's not a super 
there's not a whole lot of detail on them in the art. Um, the rest of the costume is super detailed. Uh, that is a great question. Let me see. Uh, he does a lot of um, artwork for like uh, Blizzard and stuff. Like most of like Jessica Negri's costumes he designed uh, are a lot of them. Not most, but like all of like the ones that are like, uh, it's just Zach Fisher art. Z-A-C-H. Um, and if you, when you look at his page that you'll probably be like, oh yeah, I've seen his stuff before, even if you didn't know his name. Um, cause I'll, he does a lot of art for a lot of cosplayers and stuff like that big group at, um, BlizzCon last year that like Jackie Kraft and a bunch of people were in. Oh, there you go. There's the link. Um, but yeah, Jessica has done a lot of his, um, done a lot of stuff with him. And I'm trying to see, I know this particular costume he had actually posted on Instagram at some point, but I don't, it was a while ago now. Oh, well, this is, this is like, this is a more recent thing showing like past work, but it's the middle one there. So it's the samurai based on, on Okami. Um, and so, but the nice thing about that project was that, uh, like I said, the, the swords themselves are the part that I worked on or am working on. And so it was kind of like, here's kind of like the general idea of what these are supposed to look like, but like have fun and do whatever you want. And so I got to add, um, some embellishments and things to it that I thought would, would be cool that weren't necessarily part of the design. Um, and actually, yeah, no, he's, he's amazing. There's one of them is sitting over here, so I'm working on it. So I'm going to go grab it and keep talking about it while I'm waiting for that glue to dry anyway. So um, I did a, it, this is the Wakazashi, but it's a, it's a, it's a Wakazashi Katana combo set. So I posted these on Instagram, I think the other day, but you can see them up closer. So um, the only thing really in the, in the art was that was this spiral design thing on for the end caps. And then they had white handles and that's about all you see. Cause they're in the sheaths. And so, um, what I did is, uh, I made like this, this is like this vinyl alligator skin thing, but I, um, I tinted it red to make it look like a kind of like a dragon skin kind of thing. And the costume has some red and stuff on it, some like crimson. So that ties in with the costume. And then on these, um, oh, I'm totally blanking on the name. I know all, all of these little pieces on katanas have like specific, very specific names. I'm totally blanking on all of them. But then I put the profile of Wakami on the, oh my gosh, on these anyway. <laughs> and then, um, and then on the, these are the, the cross guards are called Suba. I think I'm getting that right. And these are Kashira. I, I don't know. I'm totally blanking, but. So if you play Wakami, you'll, this looks familiar, I'm sure, but um, the flame and the jade disc that is on Okami's back, I worked into that um, just to give it, to tie it to the game a little bit, but not in a way that's really noticeable, because if she has the swords in the sheaths, all you're really going to see is a little bit of this detail poking out. Um, so it's kind of like almost like a little hidden Easter egg thing on the swords, but, um, and then I used a white suede wrap over top of the red and those are the swords and like i said this is the that's why the blade I, you can't oh i can hold it up and you can see it on the other thing but that's why the blade is so short on this one because this is the the wakazashi which is the the smaller second sword the hilts are the same size on the two swords uh, but then the blade is like a foot shorter on the second one <clears throat> Safe zone, because you have to have a safe zone in the workshop, especially for those. Because the, the swords are finished, like I said, I'm just working on the sheaths. Um, let's see. Hey, that that worked. No. Oh, I keep forgetting where I'm. Where the camera is. I fixed the door. It works now. It just has this little stick poking up the bottom, but I can trim that off in a sec. Cool. Okay, so that's fixed. Now, oh, where'd my snips go? Snip that off. I think I left them over here. They were. And 
snip. Cool. Fixed door. Yay. And I'm still on Instagram, which means I can't see. Go back. Okay. Oh, motivation. <sighs> yeah. All the things she said. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and on a related note, like I, we were just talking the other day, I don't even, I can't even remember the last time I made, uh, other than like a piece here or there, I can't even remember the last time I actually, I don't remember the last costume I actually finished for myself. Um, every time I start on something, it's like, I like, I get to a certain point and I'm just like, meh. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm getting kind of to the point where, for the most part, I like making stuff for other people more than I like making it for myself. Um, especially because, uh, oh, you know, ADHD brain. Um, I can only work on something so long before I get distracted by something else um, and want to move on, uh, which is fine for my own stuff. But, of course, for customers, that... That doesn't work, um, uh, which is is actually one of the big reasons why I actually realized that I should try and get diagnosed in the first place because I didn't didn't really know. Uh, I just thought I sucked. Honestly, is what it comes down to. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, there's so like I've I've mentioned this a little bit before. There's so many people that do this that have ADHD and like talking to them and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, maybe I should talk to somebody about that because that sounds way too familiar. Um, and so, yeah. So here we are, making things, making for the sake of making is still therapeutic. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely part of it. Well, and actually, speaking of getting motivated to do stuff, so this is, this is, this is, I actually brought out a couple other things to talk about because I actually wanted to talk about this a little bit. You know, the whole point of this is that it's not the same stuff that we always do, right? It's a fairy house. It, and the beauty of stuff like this is like, oh, I'm making a fairy house. It doesn't have anything to do with costumes and props, right? Well, except that all the techniques that I'm using to like paint it and finish it and everything else are all things that directly apply to making costumes and props. Um, doing scale models and diorama type stuff for models is how I learned like a majority of the techniques that I use when I'm finishing props and things. Um, but doing something that is adjacent, I feel like that usually that that's one thing that kind of helps me. Um, and related to that is we have kids. And so, you know, you got to try to figure out ways to motivate the kids and want them, you know, for them to want to do stuff other than just sit and play video games. And so uh, myself and uh, Heather and our youngest kids have really been into Breath of the Wild. And so my son actually, um, my son who's seven came to me and he's like, oh, I found this video the other day. I was looking for, uh, he was looking for something and he ended up finding these tutorials on like making all these like little video game plushes and stuff. And for anybody who um, knows Breath of the Wild, there's these Koroks, which are these little guys that are basically, they're like tree spirit dudes and their body is basically a piece of wood and then they have the, a mask that looks like a leaf. And the beauty of, <laughs> it kind of ties into what I was saying before, like, I like having, when I'm making something, I like having a direction, but not necessarily an exact thing I need to copy. And the beauty with the Koroks is in Breath of the Wild, there are 900 of these and they're all different, right? It, because they're just, it's random, like colors, shapes, everything's random because they, they can be made out of any kind of tree plant, right? And so it's perfect, especially for little kids. Cause I was like, hey, let's just all make our own Koroks because literally you can just draw right and like you don't it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to match anything you have to draw a body and a leaf those are the two things you have to draw and it's a korok right and it literally it doesn't matter what my four-year-old 
our seven year old, our 12 year old or 14 year old adults, anybody can do one. It doesn't matter what your drawing skill level is because they come in all shapes and sizes, right? So this one's mine. So this is his body. And then I drew a circle where his nose is gonna go. And then here's his mask that's gonna go over top of it. Um, so that one's gonna be mine. And we're gonna do these out of like felt and fleece, just real easy for the kids to do. But so that, that's the one I designed. And then um, this is the one that our seven-year-old designed. So here's his body and here's his little mask. Um, and my, my son was like, well, can it be any kind of plant or tree I want? And I was like, yeah, like that's, that's the beauty of it. You can be anything. He's like, okay, well, I want mine to be a cherry blossom cor oak, which of course there aren't any cherry blossom cor oaks in Breath of the Wild, which is, so like, it's like, that's the part where it's just like, he, he took it and then like added his own thing to it. And it's just, it, it, it's amazing to see. Uh, so we did the templates and then we're going to cut out the fabric and help them sew them together and everything and do that stuff. But then of course my daughter, who is four, was like, nah, I don't want to do a core oak. I want a Sheikah slate <laughs> because of course she has, she has to be extra. Um, and so she has, a, a, I think it's a Kindle fire tablet. Um, so what I did is I actually, this is, I, I got the dimensions and a template for, this is the actual tablet. So like, this is where the camera is, where the power plug goes, where your headphone jack is. Um, and then I have a pile of scrap foam over there and we're going to make it out of e basically make an EVA foam Sheikah slate that her tablet can go in. And then it's a case for her tablet at the same time that's made out of EVA foam. So it's nice and protective. Um, and then I was like, you know, we can make like the, the glowy blue eye, your wallpaper. So when you aren't even using your tablet, then it looks like the Sheikah slate. And so she's like totally excited about that. So those are pretty cool projects. Don't have anything to do with cosplay, obviously, but they're, and, and like I said, there's making templates, there's sewing, there's doing EVA foam work. We are going to paint them all. Um, like for the detail work on the Sheikah slate, I, I actually got out some, we have some Fibra, which we haven't used. And I was like, oh, I'll use that because we never use it for anything else. But it's all these skills that apply to the prop making and costume making. Um, so again, it's very adjacent. And so it kind of still scratches the itch without having to be like, I'm just doing the same thing I'm always doing, um, which is cool. Uh, now, after all that talking, I'm going to take a drink and try and catch up on everything that everybody else said in the chat in case I missed anything. Um, <clears throat> okay, so there's the door. It's on there. Um, I don't think I care about whether or not the doors open inward. What I could do, though, if I really want to stop that, is I can put some of the little rocks and stuff back behind here. But I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I care enough for that. Um, so one of the things that is essential in so this is, I'm not changing subjects. This is related, I swear. One of the things that is always amazing to me is how many times, like, since I started doing prop making and costume making, that something comes up and it's like, oh, I never thought to use that for this, but it's something that I've used before and, like, how much crossover there is with other things. So, specifically, so if you all don't know what these are, these are basically plaster bandages. Uh, I know Alan knows these intimately because he cut like a ton of these when we were molding my head. Um, and so it was funny to me that when uh, we went to do the life casting of my head and then my arm too at Chad's that he broke these out because I've used these a million times, but not for molding and casting. I use them for diorama making. So especially if you're doing like a big diorama, um, one of the easiest ways to build up your base landscape is you you basically figure out your box or platform size and then you can take foil or like um, craft paper kind of ball it up and get uh, your your levels and then you take this stuff and the way this stuff works is uh, if you've never used um, the, this plaster this rolled plaster you cut it you can cut it or use it you know whole whatever you dip it in water and get it wet and then it this all of this white stuff that looks kind of like mesh um 
is actually plaster. And so you get it wet and then you can form it to things and it dries really quickly. So you can really quickly build that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to kind of build up the edges on here and close it off a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it was just, I was like, oh, I've used that so many times. And here it is being used in something that I never would have like thought of. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut this this way. And let's see. So I'm going to go with, yeah, I'm going to cut these in half the other way too. And you can, you can basically cut this in any way, size, shape you want. And so you just dip it in water, which you can't see because the water's over here. Let me, I'm going to move this over here. So you dip it in water, which I did. And then what you want to do is you just take your two fingers uh, over, nope, over here. Nope, I can't do it over there either. There we go. You take your two fingers and you just go, because you don't want it to be too wet, and you kind of just wring it a little bit. And you can see, I'm going to just try and shoot, like it starts to close up the mesh because the plaster is kind of is water soluble and then you kind of just you can fold it and roll it and do all kinds of things so i'm just going to seal this edge on here a little bit and you can see maybe when i push on it the mesh kind of goes away right and it closes it all in so i'm going to do is i'm going to just right now i'm working on just sealing this edge and when i push in this it actually because it's so thin, because it's the like the the fabric, that's also what helps it be strong once it then re-dries, is that it has this mesh fabric that it's it, that's encapsulated in it. So it actually makes a really rigid structure when it's all done. Um, and while it's still wet, the more you kind of you can kind of smear it around and smudge it and flatten it out. And you can see the ridges in here this is this is how much it can conform to things you can actually see the ridges of the spool holder <clears throat> it's a little bit harder to see over here but like i'm actually making it kind of conform into the rocks on the 3d print even um, so it and it dries pretty pretty quickly so you don't really even have to wait that long um, before you can do, and so and you can do you can build up layers on it so that it um, gets stronger and you can, uh, like I, right now I'm using just the, the cut edge so I don't have the, the flat edge. And I'm not going to do a ton, but like I can, I can kind of roll this up if I want and do something like this and it'll make like a little bump there if you were doing like an actual diorama versus I don't care too much about this top part just because this is all going to get covered with mulch once it goes in the garden. Um, mostly I'm just smoothing it as much as possible so that it sticks as much as possible. Um, I am going to seal this whole thing when it's all done because like I said, it's going to be in the weather. And the last thing I want is for it to just all fall apart, which it might anyway. That's okay. If it does, let's make another one or make something else. Um, yeah. <clears throat> have that base on there and you can see if I go over here this is already starting to get uh, I guess you can't really tell but this part that was wet and hanging down like you can see if I lift it up it's kind of it barely droops back in because it's already hardening um, and so what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna take the next piece tip this up and so I'm gonna stick this on the side over here and then wrap it back up here on the top and pull that tight kind of see what I'm doing here and I'm smooth this out to 
get that all in there. And just fill in the cracks here a little bit. Um, and now I'm getting my hand in here to kind of smooth the, the first piece and the second piece together to thicken that up. And uh, build this up into a kind of a wall here on the side. So there you go, I got the little side there. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing on the other side with this other piece. And again, put this over top. Now, scoot this over a little bit more so you guys can see better. Sorry, falling off the table. Tip this up, there we go. Lay this down here, smooth out the bottom, get it a little tight, and then again, I don't know how well you can see this part, but as I run my fingers over it, it kind of fills in all the, the grid and everything. Um, the other thing you can do is you can get, like if you have Plaster of Paris, you can also build up on top of that. Um, because this, this part for this specifically is going to get mostly covered by actual like rock and dirt outside. So I'm not terribly worried. I just, I'm trying to make this have a little bit of a front on it that's uniform. So that's why I'm kind of trying to build this up a little bit on the front. So there we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. And the because it dries so well and it's just air dry, like even like with just like a hair dryer, you can just on even on cool, but like on low, you can you can hit this and it'll help it dry easier. Um, if you have a heat gun, you can do that too, but that might be a little too aggressive. All right, so we're getting somewhere now. There we go. There's a little thing. So now what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut some more of this and actually build up a little bit of, where is it? I'm gonna do this, yeah, and then I'm gonna do that. Okay, so this piece, uh, also when you're working with this stuff, <laughs> I had the roll sitting right here, which is between where I'm going and the bucket of water. Don't do that. Um, the last thing you wanna do is like spill a bunch of water on that because then you're gonna have a big, hard, cylinder of plaster that is useless so uh, like I was saying even though these are flat sheets you can you can like do all kinds of crazy stuff with them so like what I'm gonna do right here is I'm actually gonna kind of roll this up and kind of pull it up and just blend it into the top here and give this a little bit of extra dimension since the door that I printed is not quite uh, the same size as the spool holder. So there's kind of this weird bump in here. So I'm gonna just do that to kind of fill in and give it a little bit of a ridge so it's coming down a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. Oh, and that's another thing is, like this is, you can't really see on the camera, but it's kind of a little extra wet. I didn't wring it out as good as I probably should have. So you can actually just take like a paper towel and just do this too to soak up a little bit of that extra moisture um, and that'll actually help with it drying faster too it also helps with you can also use it to kind of push it in the cracks and stuff more too there we go cool okay and then so the next thing I'm gonna do is I think let's see I'm gonna take another little piece here and I'm just gonna actually kinda just slap it right in here. And so this is where it starts getting kinda cool to play with this stuff because you can kinda do all kinds of weird stuff like that. And it'll it'll dry like that. Let's see, I'm trying to just 
to, I want it to be a little bit more in there. There we go. Yeah, just something like that. I feel kind of like this. I feel a little Bob Rossi when I'm doing this sort of thing. Oh, now just make the little pretty cool little tree thing. Um, and I'm going to leave it just like that. Um, that's, that side's done. Uh, so then I'm going to take and do kind of the same thing on the other side. And again, like I said, oh, can you hear the puppy? I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's pretty cute, I have to say. That was a good decision to get a puppy finally. Um, but yeah, so just again, I'm just going to kind of flop this in here randomly, whatever. Doesn't matter. Cooper. Hi, baby. Hi, bro. Oh, here he comes. All right, who wants to see the puppy? I know it's what you all came for, right? You're just waiting for him to show up on camera, aren't you? Hi, everybody. There he is. <gasps> There's the pupper. What does your pupper do? Hi, baby. Oh, you get dirty kiss? Mm, 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 oh, yes. Mm. Oh, not, yes. No, no mouth. No mouth. No tongue. No tongue. It's always tongue with him, but just not my tongue. That's... <laughs> already doing? Egg making stuff. You good boy. Here we go. Just, like I said. Just happy, happy little trees. Oh, wait, what? There, there are no mistakes. Just happy little accidents. Oh, yeah, that, that's it. The happy accident. That's, what's that? I don't know. It's got your name on it. Oh, it's got my name on it. Cool. Um, hmm. So, and I don't know if you can't really hear it, but uh, I guess this is for yours. Oh, yeah, that's for me, yeah. Speaking See? Of that, that was fabric like two minutes ago, and now it's hard. This stuff is awesome. I love it. Um, speaking of Sheikah slates. I swear I didn't get this for any reason other than a reference. Um, it's actually a switch case for my switch, but it looks like a Sheikah slate. Which is pretty bomb, actually. Right? It's pretty cool. It's got all these little rubber like, things on yeah, it. Yeah, it's like silicone Sheikah slate thing. Word. I'm going to go put it inside. Yeah, I, my, I don't want to touch You're it because I have stuff plaster. all over me. Cool. Plaster fingers. Yeah, plaster fingers. All right, so now we have a little bit more built up there. And yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think I do need to put something in here because I'm tired. I don't want this door. I don't want these doors to keep falling in. So I'm going to throw something. Well, I just I need to stick something back there so the door can't go in any more than it than I oh, want it to. Yeah. I still want it to be able to open and close, but I want it to not go in that far. Um, what I'm actually going to do is... Let's see. Let's look in the magic bin of... Oh, maybe I have it up here already? No, I didn't get any of the rocks. Let's get some magic rock. Eh, that's maybe too big. Uh, oh, actually, where did that little... There it is. So I think if I stuff it. I knew I should have fixed that door before I glued everything on here. It's okay though, I'll figure this out. I put that right there. What happened? No, that doesn't that doesn't do anything. What about there? It needs a door stop. That's what it needs. <laughs> and so I'm gonna make one. <clears throat> Cut a 
piece of this off of here. And if I put this right in there, I could, there's, I was, <laughs> there's a, you know, sometimes you get like that, this thing in your head and you're like, oh, I don't want to. So the, the threshold of the door has, um, is, is rock. It's like a part of the 3d print and you can't really see it, but, it, and I, and I was thinking I, I, I had, I was like, oh, I could use a little piece of plaster and just make like little door stops. And I was like, well, I don't want to cover the rock. So then of course I, my second idea was something that covers it even more, which is just silly. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to use your idea instead. Cause then I can paint it and it will blend in with the rock. <laughs> Oh, I think I made too small of a piece, but that's okay. I can build up on it once it's in there. All right, so if I put that little thing right there, is it going to hit that? Oh, it's not. Yep, I was right. Not big enough. That's okay. Now, cut a bigger piece. Oh, and that's the other thing, too. Is like, I don't want to cover up this rock that literally is going to be impossible to see when all is said and done. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right. So what I'm doing with the, this is a sculpting tool, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of like mashing it all around and making it all lumpy so that it looks like a stone versus just like a folded up roll of newspaper or something. Um, that should take care of it, I think. Oh, are you kidding me? You know, I know what part of the problem is. Yep, that is part of the problem. That was right. Um, when I fix this door and I put that post on it, when I lift it up, so the post that I made is about an eighth of an inch longer than it needs to be. And so when I pick it up, the door is fine because it sinks down into the hole. But when I set it down flat on the table, it pushes up on the peg, up on the peg, and makes the door higher. And so then it doesn't, it opens more than it should because of that. So if I just snip more of this off, that should help with that problem. And I put it back down. I think I need a little bit more of the plaster though on this. That's the other thing too, is this stuff, um, once you get it wet, it does like shrink down quite a bit. So like it, it can be, tricky to uh, calculate how much you need, especially when you're doing something really tiny like this. The other thing too that's nice about uh, going back to the Koroks and the Sheikah Slate thing is um, when we make stuff like that for ourselves, it's 
always like an opportunity. Like we always are like, well, would anybody else want to make a Shika slate? I mean, cause I have to make a pattern to make our Shika slate. So I could make that into like an official pattern and put it up in our store. Um, so then if anybody else wants to make one, they can take it and size it to whatever device they want to put in there. Um, scale it, you know, you want to put an iPhone in there. You want to put a MacBook Pro, like whatever you want to put in there, you know, you could scale it to fit and uh, make your own EVA Sheikah Slate case for whatever device it is. Um, same thing with the Koroks, like, do we want to make Koroks for people? I don't know. Oh, we can. Tell us what size you want and uh, we'll make you a Korok. All right, so now I need to let that dry. But yeah, so you see this is already hardened. It's not smooshy at all anymore. Um, oh man. like the never-ending door of doom the little net when I when I cut the bottom off of it it broke off now I have to make a new post for it again So who else has Hamilton just playing in their brain constantly? Is it just me? Like everything, everything makes me think of a line from Hamilton at this point. Everything I say and do, uh, or like in, it doesn't even necessarily have to be about some, like related to what I'm doing. Sometimes like a line just plays in my head or. <laughs> Not constantly. Whoa! Cool. Near constant? <laughs> um, it probably doesn't help that I've, since I made my playlist, I've listened to it like at least once a day for, what's the date today? Oh, for basic, for, for a month. I've listened to the entire thing at least once a day for a month. Um, except for the last few days, I haven't listened to it as much, but that's only because I'm listening to the Alexander Hamilton audiobook biography that it, it was loosely based on. Like, if I'm not actually, like, singing one of the songs in my head, I'm, like, using quotes to reply to things online. <laughs> I don't know why, how it all of a sudden, like, just became all-consuming. Which, you know, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it is what it is, that's for sure. Did this fit? Oh. I should have tested that before I put glue on it. Don't do that. Don't make something and then glue it on without testing to see if it fits first. That's just a bad idea. That should be common sense and I shouldn't need to say that, but yet here I am. Like, I know it's not everybody's uh, cup of tea necessarily, but damn, it's just, I, like, for me, I just love the heck out of it. I just, I don't, and I don't, I'm not even sure why I love it so much. Um, the funny thing is I avoided it for a really long time because I didn't think I was going to like it. Um, like, 
you know, everyone's been talking about it for years. And I was just like, eh, this doesn't seem like my thing. Um, in particular, because like U.S. history just has never been something I'm really interested in. So it's like, oh, a musical based on the founding fathers. That doesn't sound interesting at all. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, like I said, here we are. And uh, it's like one of my favorite things ever at the moment. Um, all right, let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to break this even worse but before I get this in here, the rate I'm going. Don't move. Like I have a history degree and um, at my school, like for your history degree, what you have, you have to pick your area of focus and then whatever your area of focus is, you like, that's where the majority of your upper division classes are, are focused on because that's your focus. I'm gonna say focus a whole bunch of times real fast. Um, and, uh, but then you have to take um, like four classes, two from two other areas um, that aren't your focus just so that you know, you're a little bit more well-rounded and so my my focus is was whatever you want to call it i mean i still have a degree so i guess is um is medieval was european history specifically medieval european history and um and so like you had to take so i had to take two u.s history classes and then two um Asian history classes and so I uh, I took one summer I was like well I just want to get the U.S. history classes over with because I don't like U.S. history so much so one summer I took both of the U.S. history classes because I was like well at least if I take them as summer classes like I'll get them over with really fast and so I yeah, that's what I did I took I took the two um, U.S. history classes one summer so that I they were only I only had to sit through them for six weeks and I took them both at the same time to just get them over and done with. Um, there we go. And hey, look, the doors don't fall in because of that lump that's in there. Yay! So, next step is a base color for this stuff. Ugh, I'm getting, let me wet my hands in my bucket over here because I'm getting plaster on everything that I don't want to be white now. All right, so I'm gonna do is get a little bit of water on here. And the nice thing about the plaster powder is it'll wipe off pretty nicely. So just get that off the front where I don't care for it to be. There we go. Now, I think what I'm going to do next is what do we have over here. I think I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with this stuff. Yeah. This is just a um, raw umber. And I'm going to do, so one of the, what, what I usually use for um, the base paint on something like this that's plaster is a sponge brush just because it's, it's easier. All right, so I'm going to. Squirt out a bit of this. This paint, um, it's Sennelier brand, um, which you would think would mean that this is super expensive, but it's actually not as expensive as you thought. It's also super thick. I don't know if you noticed, like I squirted that out and like it's still tube shaped from the tube that it came out of. So it's super thick, which is good because uh, then you, you know, you can thin it out with water and um, It goes a lot longer. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna sponge this all on here. 
That's a lot darker than I was expecting it to be. I don't know what I was thinking. But that's okay, because what I can do, I can mix in some other stuff. Make it all kinds of random colors, which also works. These are like my go-tos. My raw umber, yellow ochre. And these, for this stuff, like these are just like super cheap paints. Burnt umber. Um, because... You know, you don't really need much of any, much, uh, all right, there we go. Get some variety in there. And again, this is mostly going to get all covered eventually, but I don't want, for anything that's not covered, I don't want white sticking out because why would I want white sticking out? It would not look good. The sponge is nice because it gets into all the little nooks and crannies of the plaster pretty nicely. Things getting all in there. And as per usual, I did not get enough paint out, but that's okay. I got enough for the top, and then I can move on to the rest. Uh, and the other nice thing with the sponge is, especially where I'm kind of going onto the rocks of the print that's already kind of painted, I can blend it a little bit easier. <clears throat> I forgot I have this too. What is this? Oh, this is a lot thinner already. Put some of that on there. Get in those nooks and crannies. This one. That I'm putting on now is a uh, is not quite as, as opaque as the other paints so it'll it won't completely cover the other paint it'll soak in there and let the other color still shine through a little bit give it some more depth there's that word again um, when you are painting, if you're if you ever are doing any of this plaster type stuff when you're painting on it, because it um, the way that it works obviously is with water. Uh, you want to make sure you don't get it too wet from your paint at any given time. So, you know, kind of do a little bit and let it dry before you go back and put too many coats on it because you don't want it to stay wet and damp in there for an extended period of time. There we go. It's blending in there. So I'm gonna use, I'm actually using the flat unused part of the sponge to just kind of wipe that edge there and help it blend in a little bit without having like a stark contrast between the two. I'm gonna open these doors a little bit if I can. See if I can get in here with this on that little bit of Some of my some of this stuff a little bit darker. A bit of water. And get in here on this little lump I put in here. Oh, for my door stop. This is why I mentioned earlier getting crappy brushes out for this because. If there's something where I can't get in there, little nooks and crannies with the sponge, I can use a crabby brush and just kind of slap it around. It doesn't really come out right, but you know what I'm talking about. All right. Let's see, a little bit of white where it's sticking out there. So. There's the top part, and turn around to the door, and look, they don't fall in, and you can't see the plaster I put there because I painted it. So then, let's see, I'm going to go back to do some more of this stuff, and a little bit of, here we go, the really, really cheap black craft paint. This is the dollar store stuff. And I'm not talking like a dollar per tube. I'm talking 
like a dollar for a four pack of acrylic paint. Can't use the label anymore, but these are from the dollar store. It comes with a black, like I think it was a black, a white, a red, and a yellow or something like that. And it's like, it's literally a dollar for four of these. And they're great for stuff like this where you're literally just mixing and slopping around paint um, for like weathering and stuff because it doesn't need to be great paint to just wash over something. Again, get in, get in all of the nooks and crannies with this stuff. Oh, I made too many crannies. I can't get in there with the sponge brush. Come on, get in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get the brush from that, the other brush. So trying to, oh, see you later, Alan. I was just about to say, I'm trying to uh, make more of a schedule for streaming. And so like um, part of it's tricky because I have to figure out like there are certain days of the week that the I don't ever have the kids, which is an easy, like today. Um, so that's an easy day to like schedule a stream. Um, but then some days the they alternate week to week, wh whether they're here or not. Um, so that's a little bit more difficult because I don't want to put something on the schedule like the twitch doesn't let you say like make like alternating week schedules or anything like that it's just your schedule is your schedule so for days where weeks where the kids are here I can't I can't really put something on the schedule and say like oh every other week you can't you can't do that so I'm trying to at the very least put on the schedule stuff that I can I know will be every week that doesn't necessarily be the only things on there so what I what I set up was that uh, on Wednesdays I put a block from two to four, and um, I didn't think I was gonna actually go that long, but it looks like I probably will today. Um, so I put a block from two to four on Wednesdays, and then on for doing this kind of stuff, just hanging out, working on whatever random crap in the shop, and then um, I set up a block for um, Thursday nights. So tomorrow night at six thirty. Uh, where I'm actually not going to be in the shop for the stream for that stream, I am going to be uh, upstairs on the computer, and we'll see how this goes because I've never done this before. But I'm going to do um, some like 3D modeling and templating and stuff like that that I do on the computer. Um, so I'm going to be doing 3D modeling and then also just talking about like some of the stuff with like how I research some of the stuff that I do for 3D modeling and template making. Um, I might, I'm definitely going to be doing 3D modeling tomorrow night, um, working on the finishing up the Sister Night stuff that we have. So if you are interested at all in Sister Night or the Watchmen TV show, that will probably be interesting to you because it's not just, I'm not just going to be streaming, working on the 3D modeling program. I'm also going to be talking about the props that we're making and like the symbolism and stuff that I've found out and like some of the research that I did on it because of course it's impossible to just make something without like doing a deep dive into what it means and a bunch of other stuff because you know again ADHD brain um plus I, I like for me that stuff's fascinating and hopefully it'll be fascinating for other people too And so, yeah, so that's going to be tomorrow night. But then, but so every Thursday night, that's going to be my goal is to kind of do that sort of thing where whether it be 3D modeling or making templates or whatever. And then while I'm working on that, talk about some of like the research and uh, everything else that goes into how I make things real. Uh, obviously, Sister Night is a little bit easier as far as how I make it real because it's already real. Um, but like how do we decide what something looks like in real life that is fake or magic or um you know that's actually one of my favorite things to do is figuring out like something from especially from animation video games are getting so realistic at this point that it's um for the most part that it's pretty easy to trend well 
that most of them are pretty easy to translate to real world. There's still a lot of like defying physics and things <laughs> that make it challenging. But for the most part, like you, you know, you don't have to figure out like the basics of, of something from a video game. Um, like the Breath of the Wild isn't as realistic, so the Sheikah Slate is a little bit different. And like I have to because I'm making it from my daughter's tablet, I'll have to figure out you know what 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 things I need to change and tweak to make it more realistic. Um, but like for animation and stuff, uh, especially depending on the animation. But in general, animation stuff is pretty far removed from reality, uh, and you can't usually see like textures of fabric and materials. So you kind of have to figure out. Okay, well. If this was realistic, then what what would it look like? Um, would it be linen? Would it be polyester? Is it leather? Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, another thing that happens a lot in animation is that um, things aren't consistent because different people draw it on different episodes. You know, things change over time. And so... Um, <laughs> One of my one of my favorite ones is I was somebody was asking me to um, I didn't actually end up making this but it was somebody wanted a quote for a sword one of the swords in um, Voltron this is like a couple years ago when Voltron was super popular and before everybody kind of gave up on it but um, and uh, oh, that is not what I want. Sometimes it happens. Uh, but so when somebody asks for a quote for something, like, you know, the first thing I do is I go and I get reference pictures and kind of figure out a, the baseline idea of what it's made out of, what size it is, stuff like that. And so there's this one scene in particular that the sword is in. Um, I think it might have been one of, it might have been something Lotor was using or somebody else. But anyway, so in the scene, like, the sword comes out. And you like if you if you look at it in proportion to just like the the guy holding it, it's like okay, that looks like it's about three and a half feet long. And then like you you go to the next scene and it's like oh, actually maybe that's like four and a half feet long. And then like a couple scenes later, like it gets like knocked out of his hand. It's laying on the ground. Someone's standing there and it looks like it's about two feet long. So it's like okay, so it can't be two feet, three and a half feet, and four and a half feet all at the same time. So how long am I going to, like, what size am I actually going to make this? Um, so what I'm doing here is I made a really watered down um, dark brown paint that I'm just slapping on all of this. And the reason I'm doing that is this is a wash. Uh and what you're gonna see is, oh, look, I made everything all ruined. Everything's just dark brown, yep. Um, <laughs> bleh, dark brown everywhere. Um, but like I said, it's really watered down, so you can actually see, if I go like this, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a paper towel, and go like this on here. You can see, bam. And already that door, the wood grain and stuff, well, you can't really see it on the camera as well as I can in person. But at least the big cracks you can see on camera, there's actually wood grain on, on the door, on the wood panels. Um, so doing this, it gets that darker paint down in all the nooks and crannies and crevices, um, and then leaves the high parts, the base color that is lighter. But brings out see that bam pop those rocks right out of there but you can still see the green and the brick color that i mentioned earlier in there so then next what i'm gonna do i'm actually gonna soak this up some because i don't want all this wet stuff on here your paper towel that you used to wipe stuff off is actually great for uh <laughs> painting things too so that's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yellow ochre again. Let me pull it over here. I'm going to take my spongy brush again. And oh, there's a lot of paint in here still. I'm going to get most of the paint out of here, actually. Um, 
And as you can see, I'm not I, I'm not cleaning these brushes much. Uh, and the reason for that is because I kind of like the, the mix of paint. So I just kind of got that on there a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go on here and hit the top edges a little bit with this. A little bit more. And you can see it's like totally, I'm just kind of going randomly on here and just doing this. And because these rocks are so craggy, uh, it just like hits and picks up little corners and things here. So again, it just, uh, you really can't see it on the camera. But once this is all like all the way done, done, I'm gonna take it out and install it and take pictures and post them up. But so you can see though that it's adding some, some more depth and stuff to it. A little bit more there. And do the same thing over here on this, even though it's mostly gonna get covered. I just don't like solid color anything. See if you can see that. Oh, you can see a little bit how I hit the highlights on those um, with the mixed paint. It just gives it a little bit of variety and texture to it. And a little bit more. And because I didn't uh, completely wash the brush, it has a little bit of that dark brown still kind of embedded in there. And so it, it's not making it, like, if it were just the yellow by itself, it would be pretty bright. Um, yeah, so. Oh, I hit a spot that I didn't smear it very good, but yeah, so there we go. And you can kind of dab some too to give you a little bit of pops of color. That's actually, that's one of the things I like doing too is like I'll do, if you do dabs, <laughs> not dabbing, dabs, um, and get like some globs of paint, uh, then you can go back in like with the side of the sponge brush and kind of just, and it'll, it's almost like think about like putting on makeup, right? Or are you like doing contouring and blending it in for people who do makeup? I suck at makeup, but I watch the videos and it's amazing how similar some of these things are. But so so just doing that little dabbing on there and all of a sudden it kind of it makes it so it doesn't stand out as much, but you can still see that that little bit of color change there. And it blends it in but gives it some extra depth. depth. There we go, there we go. And what the heck, we'll do some up here too, just for the, just for the heck of it. Not that that part actually matters for this, but. There we go. There's our door. And there's our rock face to either side of it. It's all kind of blended in. Okay, so. That part's done. So next up is another drink, because I'm parched. Holy cow. Trying to talk for like hours at a time is kind of hard. <laughs> surprise. Uh, no, not surprising anybody, I'm sure. This is my, oh, you know, I just had a brilliant idea. This is just water, so. Oh. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. So I mentioned this before on a stream, but this is my little trick because I don't want to use a whole bunch of water. So I just have this little tiny cup in here that I squirt a little bit of water in, but I can't use that and like let my brush stand up because it'll tip over the little cup. So I put it inside of a big cup. Uh, so, but I only need a little tiny bit of water and then I can put my brush in there and it'll stand up and I can set it over here to soak for a while. <clears throat> okay, so next step is um oh so one of the things i'm going to do is i have this cool pink color shift paint from it's a from folk art and this is uh what color is this orchid flash um but all these color shift paints they kind of shift in the light i don't know if it'll do it in here really but like this one kind of goes orange to pink 
So I'm going to use that over. I did this base silver on the door details, but I'm going to put that over top of it to give it a little bit of extra color. Um, but that'll be when everything else is dry. So now comes one of the most fun parts about doing diorama stuff, in my opinion, and that is putting the stuff on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to Actually, I'll do the top first because that'll be easiest because I can set this down and I can work on the top. And if I screw it up, it's not that big of a deal. So don't need any more of the paint for now. Um, so this stuff, and bear with me here because I haven't done this in a really long time. And this is my first time, so I might screw it up, but let's hope not. So <clears throat> if you think about um, land, like actual, like the actual landscape and turf, you have a few layers, right? You have your your soil and then, you know, grasses and weeds and other stuff, right? So it's it's very not, it's very much not uniform. So um, when you're putting on like these turfs and soils, so there's like, there's different kinds of soil and grass, like here's, here's like earth, here's soil, which is darker. Um, here is, oh, here's a little bit of like the fine rock. Uh, then there's like, clumps of foliage there's uh like dead grass there's burnt grass there's a green blend of grass so there's all these different colors because if you look at if you go out and look at your lawn unless you have fake grass there's a hundred shades in your lawn um so to get this stuff on uh there's a couple of things you can do you most of the places that sell this land the the diorama stuff they they have uh, spray glue already that you can use. The spray glue is basically just watered down white glue though, which Mod Podge is also basically watered down glue. So if you have Mod Podge, which we have plenty of, this thing is as big as my head in case you were look, wondering what the scale of this giant tub is. So if you have Mod Podge and you have an extra spray bottle, right, right. <laughs> You can um, put it in there, and depending on how you know, depending on how old your Mod Podge is and what kind of whether it's been exposed to, it might be thicker or thinner. But you can thin it with a little bit of water so that it'll come out of a squirt bottle, um, and that's what this is. This is just Mod Podge watered down a little bit so it'll squirt. Uh, or you can get like the actual spray Mod Podge. This stuff though is um, a bit more expensive, obviously, because it's in a pump bottle and everything else. But this is a little bit better than this as far as just fine control. So if you're doing something small like this, the little bottle is probably better. If you're doing like a big diorama, like if I was doing something for like a gun to model or something, then, you know, the big one is great. Um, but uh, so this is this is Mod Podge spray. It's, it's basically the exact same thing, just watered down. So what you do is you just, oh, let's see. I've never used, this is the brand new bottle. And, oh, come on, really? Is it sealed or something? It can't be sealed, no. This is the problem with glue in a spray bottle though, by the way. Um, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna use my spray bottle because that is not working. Um, so if you do do this, when you're done, you wanna you know, flush your sprayer because otherwise it's full of glue and it's not gonna work anymore. This should work, okay. So like I said, this is going to be tricky though, because this is uh, not as fine of a spray as this. I really wish this would work. It's not going to work. I'm going to stop trying. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, I made it too tight, is you want to get, oh my gosh. This spray bottle is a mess. That's okay. Is you wanna, I'm gonna do something else. What I'm gonna do instead, alternatively, you can thin out some Mod Podge. Let's just do it the easy way, right? <laughs> there we go. And you're gonna wanna start with your soil and you're just gonna go like this. Think of it like doing glitter on a, on, on a project, right? So I'm gonna just sprinkle this on here. Do, 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 do. We don't do glitter in our house. And then, you know, we all did this in like kindergarten, right? 
And now you can see there's a little bit of soil on here. And then you, this is why the spray bottle is good though. If you have a functioning spray bottle instead of this disaster that I have, um, because what you can do is, oh man, there's like a big glob on here. No wonder it's not working. I really want this bottle to work. I'm trying to get it. Oh. Let's see. Let's try and flush it. Ah, yes. There we go. Success. Okay. So a fine mist spray bottle works much better for this because there we go. So now it makes it much easier to build layers. So now I'm going to just go back over this, right? And then I'm going to get the other, uh, where do the dirt go? Ah, the earth, fine turf. And same thing, sprinkle this on here. Well, I did too much. That's okay. Like I said, it's been a while. Um, and so there we go, building up another layer. And then again, I'm going to try and... There we go. Not not quite as much. And then you just start blending your, your grasses. So I'm going to do a little bit of burnt grass, a little bit of yellow grass. Whoa. You can also put these like into a, if you have like an extra like salt and pepper shaker or something, that'll help with like uh, blending it. I'm gonna get a really loose brush here. And the thing with this stuff though is that it's, um, if you can see it on here, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's dimensional, right? Versus like whatever else. So there we go. That's, that's pretty good. Um, spray a little bit more on here. And the spraying will actually hold down the, the layer underneath it too. Um, let's see, that's the burnt grass again. Where's the, there we go. Green blend. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better this time. Scoot this back a little bit so you can feel a little better. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. And little bit of uh, and doing with the brush just I'm just doing really 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 gently and it helps it actually because it has the glue on the stuff it'll help it kind of clump up a little bit here and there and make more clumps but so and then the glue of course it's white glue so it glues it dries clear but so you can see there's all this depth of, of coloration in there um, and so now we can do the same thing on the front and the sides. I got some drips on there, but that's okay. So again, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna stand up actually. So get a little bit of, there we go. Now I'm getting the hang of it again. A little bit of that. A little bit of the other soil. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to flip over to the other side. So I can kind of see as I do this, it builds up that layering. And um, on these sides, what I'm going to do once I have, so now I have the, the soil, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray it again, and I'm gonna spray this, the front too, actually. 
I'm gonna spray that and I'm gonna do this next part holding it like this because I want it to kind of stick just on the top versus the flat surface here. So to give it that that depth of you know stuff is growing down on here, not necessarily in the shady parts because you know. Stuff grows differently in the shade versus the sun. Um, so a little bit of the yellow grass. And then a little bit. This is the green blend. Again, and I'm going to do extra at the top. And again, from this angle, so it kind of falls down. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to get some of this off the door because I don't want as much on the door. I want some on there because this is a fairy garden, right? It's been out in the woods, so it should have some stuff growing on the on the doors, but not quite as much as on the rock that doesn't get touched or moved quite as often. And I want some in there, especially in the nooks and crannies. We're going to have some grass and moss growing. So you can see all of a sudden there's some stuff growing on there, but since I came down from the top, down in here, there's not as much stuff. It's mostly just on the top. And again, with the brush, like if I want, I can say, I can, you know, you can kind of brush off if there's too much here or there anywhere. Um, and then the other thing, so that's with just the basic core stuff. Now what I'm also gonna do is in the, these little cracks, I'm gonna spritz a little extra in here and then I'm going to take, I have these little rocks. I'm going to, well, that's maybe a little, a little more than I bargained for. That's okay because I can blend it because I have this other, I have smaller stuff that I can blend it with. And then I'm going to take some of the earth and kind of get up in here from the bottom side to help blend in inside those nooks and crannies on the bottom and the underside of some of this. <laughs> Do that over here too so that matches kind of. that looks like it's been out there growing for a while right um the other thing oh and then if we want to get like i'm going to do a couple of i'm going to get really close in here because i want to too much glue that's okay it'll dry so now i have this stuff which is really cool this is like the the big clumps of foliage so see when i pull this out it's actually pretty pretty clumpy so I'm gonna stick this is where you're, you get a little bit more directed so I'm gonna put like some stuff in these nooks and crannies like it's growing in there and you know whatever tool you need to make to get in wherever you need And because this is dark green, but most of mine is, is not that dark, I'm gonna go over just a little bit with some of this to blend it in more. There we go. There we go, so now I got those little clumps growing in there. I'll go back to the other side, same thing. Make sure I'm not gonna spray myself in the face. <laughs> same thing some in there just in the cracks uh, where like something would have maybe taken root and started growing in there you know Seattle moss whatever <laughs> we all know what that looks like right oh my gosh that was something I was not prepared for moving here from California is moss 
We don't have that. And yeah, my, my favorite part about doing this is like, sometimes you're like, cause like if I just stopped right there, I'd be like, oh yeah, that doesn't really blend in very well. But that's the nice part about, you know, you going back to the whole layering and depth, you know, sprinkle a little bit of that on top of it. And all of a sudden it isn't like such a stark contrast with everything else. That piece just doesn't want to stay, does it? There it goes. And that's the nice thing too with the Mod Podge is literally like you can just soak this and you actually kind of want to. When you're all done, you want to just kind of do a coat over the whole thing um, so that it lo kind of locks it all in and won't nothing will fall off. Um, I'm actually going to take a little, this is, this is the coarse turf. It's a, it's a little bit in between the other things, but I'm going to put... I'm going to get a little bit of this stuff in the rocks uh, from the print just because I think that is I can kind of get it into the crevices some where that stuff would really stick and you know you can use your finger too it's all good all right so I'm going to Kind of brush some of this down. So I think <laughs> the nice thing is you can scoop up the stuff that you threw on the that you dropped on the ground. Kind of put it on long, put it back on with the brush. Just kind of sticking some of this on the bottom here. Spritz that a little bit. Just getting a little bit here. Or a little bit on the bottom edge. A little bit of green. A little bit of yellow. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So it's all blended in. where I had those globs of glue with kind of white highlights, but that'll come out later. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that considering, you know, I just started it at two o'clock. Cool. All right. So like I said, next step is once this is all dry, I'm gonna do that, the color shift paint on there. So this is gonna to go to the side for now. Um, and then once that's done, it is gonna go and I'm gonna put it in the garden. Thanks, man. And uh, the one thing is this stuff, because you're spraying glue and then shaking this, like you have, you can't really see it on camera, but like I can feel it. There's like this fine layer of turf on my, stuck to my arms. Um, but the nice thing is it'll it'll wash off it washes off pretty easily. But so once this is all dry, I'll paint that, and then I'm gonna put a clear coat over the whole thing to protect it since it's gonna be outside. Um, but yeah, this stuff is fun. I look like I used to like I said I, I I don't even I don't I have one I think left that's actually upstairs. Uh, one of my Gundam dioramas that I did. Most of the dioramas I did, you know, that's the one thing with dioramas, especially if they're bigger ones. They don't survive moving very well. Um, so all but one of my dioramas that I made have over time like fallen apart and gotten broken or lost um, over the ages. And so I only have the one left that I made, but it's the one I'm the most proud of. So probably why I took extra care to make sure it survived. Um, it's, it's funny that I... I was talking earlier about the whole uh, getting the ADHD diagnosis and um, it's kind of ironic, especially like try, like as an adult getting a, a diagnosis because one of the things that um, they use to diagnose you is your childhood symptoms. And 
because ADHD typically doesn't manifest uh, when you're older. It manifests younger, although it, sometimes it goes undiagnosed, but the symptoms are always there, right? But of course, one of the things with ADHD is that uh, you're an unreliable narrator, um, and it's you know not it's kind of maybe hard for you to remember things or um, you know there's this whole thing that I was reading about the other day about object permanence and like if something is out of sight it's out of mind and like you don't think about it and when I was first getting the diagnosis for everything you know they're asking me what symptoms and what how things were when I was a kid and like you know. I, you know, in my brain, I'm like, well, you know, I can't, I don't remember anything before, like maybe, you know, six or seven years ago where I had, you know, really strong symptoms. And, um, so they, they had, they wanted to interview my mom and my sister about when I was a kid and finally like interviewing my sister actually is what helped, which is great. Um, but it's just funny because so for example, like I have the, I have like I said, this is one of many bins of, that I have of this diorama stuff. And the reason I have all this stuff is because I was like, I had this notebook of all these designs and plans that I had made for dioramas for Gundam kits. And I have all the kits, most of the kits, and I have all this diorama stuff. I, like I literally in my closet have multiple kits that are partly put together, partly painted to go with these dioramas that I never finished. And like some of them go back, I think the oldest one in there is like 20-ish years old and it's like 90% done and just everything is just painted custom decals and it's just sitting in a box not finished and I I found it like it was a couple weeks ago I found it and it's like why couldn't I have remembered this when she was asking me like do you did you ever have problems finishing things before and I was like no I never like no nah, I never had that problem and it's like I literally have dozens and dozens and dozens of projects going back 20 years that are literally in the other room that I forgot about because they were in a closet. Um, it's like, yeah, this was a lot more obvious than I, than I realized. Uh. Anyway, here we go. Let's see. I'm going to actually going to switch this. Let's see if the other camera <clears throat> looks better so we can get a final, a nice final shot of this before I say goodbye for the day. Let's see. Uh, I want to switch this to, uh, that's cool. Oh, that's kind of weird. One is going one way, one's the other way. Uh, oh, this one is backwards. I can tell because of the lettering. There we go. Okay. So let's see if how this looks. Actually, I don't know if that actually changed for you guys unless I hit save. So I'm going to actually. Yeah, whatever. That switched the cameras anyway. Let's see. I don't know if that. There we go. Now it should have switched for you guys. But I'm going to try and get a close up here of this guy. This camera is not any better, actually. Okay, so let's switch that back to where it was. I'll just hold it up closer. Actually, so here you can see kind of the layers of coloring and everything and the texture of it. Um, like at a, if you hold it at an angle, you can actually see the light hitting the the different textures and stuff. Um, and yeah, the moss growing in the cracks now, the little bushes in there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Well, hopefully, I, since I didn't hit save yet. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that all actually showed up. Uh, turn it the right way. Ooh, oh my gosh. There we go. See if I can, I can't. Maybe with a paintbrush I can get in here. Just wanna. Oh, there we go. Beep. Beep pooper. Mm 
It's too close. There we go. Let's see what that is. All right. There we go. Uh, like I said, I'll uh, tomorrow night I'll be doing um, the stream from the computer and uh, doing some 3D modeling. And oh, where did I put my brush? Oh, did I put that there? I didn't. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, good. Sometimes I forget to put my brush in the water and then I have a hard crusty brush later. Uh, but yeah, so tomorrow night at 6.30, I'll be doing streaming 3D modeling and talking about that stuff while I 3D model. Thank you everybody for coming. And uh, as soon as this is all done and installed, we'll be posting up pictures of it too. So you can see the completely finished with the plant in it and everything. And uh, I'll maybe I'll do a write up on how to use filament spools for planting. Cool. All right. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a good rest of your day. Bye. That was goodbye.